the Sabbath. So now is the time for the children's story. And I was thinking, something very special happened this week to me. I got to work on one of my least favorite talents. I was asked if I would come help paint. And if you've ever seen me paint before, I'm the guy that knocks over the gallon bucket in the house and you never ask back to your house again. Or I'm the guy that paints and gets more on my face and, the, and on my clothes than I do on the wall that you've asked me to paint. But the Millers gave me another opportunity this week. So I was doing a little bit of praying. David, I did some praying. And I have a picture. So first when we went up, I'm actually scraping the wood to get the, or the paint and the wood off so that way we can put the next layer on, the primer they call it. So I'm like, this is all right, I can do this. I'm just scraping off the paint, not a big deal. But then, let's see, we got another picture. Then, that's me right there. Then they gave me this, I call it the Goodyear Michelin limp suit. Then they gave me this suit that went from my toes all the way up over my head. I had my mask on, my protective glasses on, because you gotta wear those. And now I'm spray painting the primer on the building. Now I got that job not because of my qualifications. I got that job because I was the tallest, so I could reach the highest. And I was thinking about that. This older building where people come to get well was now getting a new life. And I want to read something in John 3. In John 3, a man named Nicodemus came to Jesus, and he asked a question. Actually, he made a statement. He says, we know that you are a teacher from God, and no one can do the things and signs you do unless God is with them. However, Jesus plays things a little different than we do, right? Jesus does a lot of things different than we expect. Jesus threw this out at him. Most surely I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. So as I watch this building, it's getting new life. The old paint was stripped away. The new primer was put on. And then at last, the fresh paint was put on it for a new building. Nicodemus, we're going to talk more about that today, but had a question. How am I born again? I mean, David, you've been born once, right? But we're working on the second one now. You and I are studying this week. We had a Bible study. How are you born again? Nicodemus said something that I really appreciate. He didn't say, why do I need to be born again? He said, how do I need to be born again? How does this happen? So today, I want to thank the Millers. I want to thank everyone that came out for that project. I walked back. My wife said to me, she says, well, how did you like it? And I said, you know what? I'm becoming a painter. And as a child of God, to be born again as that building is reborn and it looks new again, I want that in my life. And that's what I like about young people. They're excited. They want to be born again. They want to study their Bibles. They want to talk about Jesus. And that's what I want. Let's say a prayer. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for putting us in places that we are often uncomfortable with. Even our exterior clothing was uncomfortable this last week. But Lord, you even worked in me a new project in my own heart. You sharpened skills that weren't sharp. All I need to do is ask how, Lord, and you're willing to show us. So, Lord, as we study a little bit more in your divine service, I pray that you will open up our hearts and may we be reborn again. And explain that to us, Lord, how that happens. In Jesus' precious name, amen.